Okay, this is going to be the weekly function test of the MSA G1 for the Marina Fire Department. Uh, this will be the weekly test and is recommended that you use this at the beginning of your shift as well to ensure that the SCBA is in service and all the functions are operating properly. So, first thing we want to do is a physical check of the SCBA and check all the major components. We'll start with the straps and the back plate. Okay, so we're going to make sure the straps and the shoulder pads are intact, nothing is torn, frayed, burned, melted, uh, contaminated from a fire or other hazardous uh, contaminants. Okay, check all straps, make sure the straps are extended at the same time. Everything's fully extended, buckles working. Okay, coming over to this side, checking all my attachment points, making sure that everything is connected properly. I can check my lumbar pad and ensure that it moves up and down freely and that it's set on the setting that I have for myself so that when I put it on, it's preset where I need it. Okay. Um, at the same time, while you're doing this, you can pair your Motorola radio with your RFID tag while you're going through this process. Lower the lumbar all the way down and your RFID reader on the pack is here where the green circle is. Uh, after you do that, then you can put your pack where uh, your lumbar support where you want it. Look at the uh, back plate assembly, okay? This is part of the power module, the other part's on the other side. I'm gonna inspect all this for any kind of cracks. I'm gonna check the handles, make sure I don't see any splits in these, these handles. These are each rated for 500 pounds and 1,000 pounds, so they shouldn't crack. Um, coming to the cylinder side of the harness, we have the uh, back side of your power module where your uh, PZO speakers are. You want to ensure that neither one of those speakers have uh, any debris in the holes where they emit the sound, and that also there's no damage to those areas. You make sure your bell is intact. You make sure your universal air connection is intact and covered properly. Okay, everything down here looks good. No damage to your hoses. Uh, your uh, pressure relief valve here on your pressure reducing section of the of the uh, pack should not have any holes in it. If it has overpressurized and blown a hole, it'll be in the green and orange tape. You'll see a hole ruptured through the tape and that pack should be taken out of service. So it's important to check that. So after we've checked the pack physically, we've looked at the regulator and ensured there's no debris where the air comes out, it's off, the buttons are functioning properly, and that there's no debris inside the retainer. Put that back in. We also look at the buddy breather pack while we're doing our inspection. I'm gonna open that and pull it out ensure that the connections are covered properly. Okay, I can take this off, make sure there's no debris in the connections and that the mechanism slides easily. Okay, take a quick look at the hose, make sure it's not damaged. Put it back, ensure the Velcro and the snaps are both secured. Now the next phase is going to be to look at the cylinder and all the mounting. We have the dovetail down here where the cylinder sits in. What we're going to want to do to check that is loosen the band by pinching on the release and bringing that up. Undo the quick connect cylinder connection, which is a small turn to the left and pull back. Okay, and that will disconnect there. We're going to remove the cylinder. Take it out all the way, check the back side of the back plate, ensure all the attachments are in place, this is the back side of the battery, and ensure none of the dovetail here is uh, cracked or doesn't have a bunch of debris in it. And it's a good opportunity to inspect your cylinder, make sure that the boot is in place, that your quick connect adapter is tight on the threads, that it's not loose, and that your dovetail is intact with no cracks, no debris caught up in there. And 
also make sure your cylinder is full. Okay, slide the dovetail down, ensure that you're seated in there properly. Snap that closed. When we reattach our quick fill, it's going to be a simple push with the palm of your hand and you're attached. Okay. Now we're going to move on to powering up the cylinder and doing a full flow and function test. Okay. A few things we're going to look for when we turn the cylinder uh, pressure on is we're going to have our regulator ensure that your bypass is off completely and that you have pushed the buttons on here. If the front side is pushed in, this is a, a, another bypass valve, then these need to be reset so the air doesn't flow when you turn it on. Okay, so when we do activate the pressure, we're going to watch for several things. First of all, we're going to get HUD lights turn on a certain sequence, as well as the light on top of your uh, your second stage regulator. We're also going to have the buddy lights turn on and the universal air connection light will turn on. On the control module, this will activate. There'll be a, a small line as it's loading, like a computer screen. And then you should get a green square with a check mark in the middle of it. If you get a red circle with an X through it, then the SCBA should be taken out of service. Uh, what we're going to watch for on the heads-up display is that all the lights light up in the proper sequence. Okay, we're also going to listen for the bell, which is your primary low air alarm, and you'll hear some beeping of the computer system within the pack booting up. Okay, there's the bell, there's the tones. My buddy lights lit up red, yellow, and green. My bypass is lighting up, and I got my green check mark. So all systems are functioning normally. Now with a full cylinder at 4,000 PSI, I should have four green HUD lights and I should have green flashing buddy lights, as well as around the red manual uh, pass alarm should be flashing green periodically, okay? The HUD lights will go out to re-light them, a single press, of a green button either side on your control module will light up your headlights again. Okay, your speaker module should have come on. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, we'll get to uh, the mask and the flow testing of the regulator in a minute. We're going to test our pass now that it's on. What we want to do is we want to test the pass and ensure that it's functioning properly. So you've already seen when it went into its initial alarm. I shook it and reset it with the shaking, okay? Okay, just like that. Now, when it goes into full alarm, I should be able to reset it with either green button. There's also a manual activation, which will reset with either button. So we wanna test both buttons. So we're gonna let the pass go into full alarm and test one button, reset it, okay? Then, I'll wait till it's done. We also have red flashing buddy lights here, and in your HUD, and on top, okay? Full alarm, two quick presses within one second will reset it, okay? If you couldn't hear me over the alarms, uh, we have red lights on your control module, red lights on your buddy lights, a red light in your HUD, and a red light on the front of your regulator, okay? Now, what I wanna do is I use this button the first time, I'm going to let it go into full alarm again. Actually, what I'm going to do is put it into full alarm manually, and I'm going to test the other green button to ensure that it comes out of full alarm with a manual activation. The buddy lights should all light up and the other warning lights as well. We'll hold down for a couple seconds. Full alarm. Okay. Quick double tap on the other green button. We're good. The other test we want to do, which you uh, should incorporate before the first button push, which I didn't do, is once it goes into full alarm, you want to ensure that shaking it does not reset the pass. So I'll let it do that now, and I'll double check that shaking doesn't reset it. And we've got our primary alarm, our early warning alarm. Shaking is 
is not resetting it. Okay, so I use the button to turn it off. Okay, so now we know that both buttons work, manual activation works, and shaking it will not take it out of full alarm. Also, while I'm looking at this uh, control module, I'll check this, the functions on this. I should see a white backlit screen here on my uh, analog. I want to check this for damage. On the models that have the tick, I want to check the front of the tick screen and ensure that there's no damage to it and it's clean and that all of this rubber boot is in place. Okay, if it's not, it should just slip back on. Uh, we already looked at the hose. So what I want to do to check the functions of the control module is that when it goes to an upright position, the screen should come on. Okay, comes on, shows your pressure. It should be a close match within 200 PSI of your uh, analog gauges. To get to the battery function, it's going to be a single press when you're in PSI mode. A single press will take you to your remaining time, your temperature, your Bluetooth, and your battery. Okay, so here's your remaining battery. It should be at at least 50%. Uh, you can feel free to change them at any time with a new fresh battery. To get to the uh, thermal imaging camera, we're going to hold down either button for two seconds. It's going to beep twice, and after about two seconds, the tick screen will turn on. To cycle through the different color palettes, a single press of the button will cycle through the five different palettes. So you can assure each one of them works. And that's it. To go back into the pressure mode display, hold for two seconds again, and we're back. Okay. The other thing you'll see when the pass goes into alarm is the lights in your analog display change, and they should also change as your air bleeds down as well. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start to Actually, we're going to do a, a flow test first. So when I inspect the mask, I want to make sure that the head net is intact and clean. I'm going to check this, the lens for any uh, damage and cleanliness. I want to look inside for any debris or damage and make sure all the parts are intact. I want to make sure my nose cup is in place. When you look inside, just like we initially trained on, the nose cup should be sitting flat against the passive uh, uh, amplifier that's in there, the gold piece. On the bottom, your exhalation valve should be clean and free of debris, and you should be able to use a, a small uh, fall point pen or something to make sure that the white part of that valve is moving freely. Also the inhalation valve on the front is the, um, the shaped item with the uh, rubber flap that opens as you breathe in. You want to make sure that's properly seated and that the rubber layer is sitting flat. Okay. So once I've ensured all of that, I'm going to put the mask on. I'm going to do a negative pressure test, hold my breath for 10 seconds and ensure that the mask doesn't come away from my face. And that's going to let me know that I have good positive uh, or rather negative pressure. Okay. After I check that, I'm going to snap in the regulator. I'm going to ensure that my HUD lights are functioning right. I should uh, kick over to the Bluetooth speaker once I take a first breath activation, or if you have your radio synced up and turned on, uh, it will transfer over to your radio when you key your mic from the uh, internal from the internal microphones on the bypass. I'm going to click it in. I'm going to take my first breath. I'm going to hold my breath and ensure that there's no leaks flowing. I'm going to pull the mask away from my face and ensure I have positive pressure. And once I've done that, then I'll go ahead and disconnect it and go through the uh, process of bleeding off the system and making sure that the HUD lights are going in the right order. I'm going to put on the mask, make sure it's seated properly. I'm going to pull straight back on the straps. I'm going to Take a breath, hold my breath for 10 seconds. I'll do it a little shorter for demonstration purposes. And make sure that the mask doesn't leak air.
Okay, so I would have done that for 10 seconds to make sure I don't have a leak. I'm going to put in the bypass. Once I put in the bypass, it's going to kick over to the Bluetooth speaker. I want to turn off the Bluetooth speaker and just hold the button down for a couple seconds. Now the Bluetooth speaker is off. Single press, Bluetooth speaker is back on. So right now, because of the way our HUDs are designed, my lights are not on. If I want to see my lights, a single press of the button, I can see that I have four green lights because I'm over 75%. So now that I know this is good, I'm going to test my bypass. Bypass functions well. I'm going to pull away from my face. Check the negative pressure, which is good. Now I can take the mask off. I'm going to push both buttons. And remove. So I know my mask is in good shape. Now I'll go through the process of bleeding this off. And what we're going to watch for when I bleed the air off is the HUD lights to ensure that they're coming on in the right order. And I'm also going to watch my uh, display on my control module as well as my buddy lights. They should come on in sequential colors, green, uh, yellow, and then red as it bleeds down. I'll have four green lights at 75%. I'll have three green lights at 50%. I'll have two flashing yellow lights. And at 35%, we'll be down to the red light. When we reach that 35% and the red lights all come on, the universal air connection light should also come on. So I'm going to turn my air off and I'm going to start the process. Now, if I don't have my HUD lights, once again, I can push any green button and the HUD lights will come on. Okay, so now I'm going to start to bleed this off. And As I do, when I get to around 75%, yellow light should, or I'm down to three lights, sorry. Three green lights, my buddy lights are still green. Okay, I'm at 2775. I'm going to continue to bleed down until I get to 50%, which will be right around 2000 PSI. Okay, the tone you just heard is your 50% alarm on your pack. Okay, your LCD display should be yellow, your buddy lights should be flashing yellow, and your HUD should be yellow, as well as the light on top of your bypass, all yellow. As I bleed it down more and we get to 35%, we'll get the red display, light around the manual, uh, pass activation will be red, Buddy lights will be red. Universal air connection will come on red. We'll have one red flashing light. The top of this will turn red. And we should get our bell alarm. So a lot of stuff to look for as we bleed it down to the next stage. You'll notice once the yellow lights come on, they stay on. They don't go off. And that's how it will function during your normal function. Uh, the, the green lights will go off, but once you reach that 50% mark with your yellow lights on, they'll remain on in your HUD. Okay. Everything's turned red. Red display, red buddy lights. My universal air connection light is on. My HUD is all flashing red, and my bell is ringing. Okay. The bell will ring until you're down to about 200 PSI, and once you reach 200 PSI, that bell should stop activating. Okay, there goes the bell. Okay, now to turn the entire system off. It's going to be a quick double click of either green button. You'll get the power light with the line going across. That's all there is to it. That would be a weekly check. 
and a functional flow test to ensure everything is operating properly.